Hey guys, this is Jay Calder with Jay Unboxing here giving you a personal prediction for Chris Eubank Jr. versus Liam Smith. And as always, this is just my take. Your prediction can be left down in the comments section below. Would love to hear them all, especially all you Brits out there. Hopefully there's a bunch of you out there. If you are, please subscribe if you haven't. Would love to hear your picks on this one. It's a good, fun, domestic fight. So leave all that down in the comments section below. A little bit of fight info here. We have Chris Eubank Jr. taking on Liam Smith. Both fighters coming from big historic boxing families in England. This will be taking place at the AO Arena in Manchester, England, airing live on Sky Sports Box Office in England and DAZN in the United States in the middleweight division. Now, a very fun domestic dust-up with either man getting at least that final run at the world stage if they're able to win. In Eubank, you have the younger, presumably hungrier fighter needing one big win before perhaps going after the gold at 160 pounds. In Smith, you have a former titleist looking for a big name win to propel him into a shot at his second reign as champion. The loser doesn't have the best outlook for their future in the sport. We just have to be honest here. So there are certainly some decent fighters with some decent stakes and it should be a decent fight as a result. So let's break this one down and try to find a winner. Starting with Eubank here, for Eubank to win, I think you want to keep a busy lead hand. He likes to sweep that left hand out there, kind of get it into a hook and just kind of a range finder. I think he needs to do that, especially when he's moving away. This will help him again kind of probe, find that sort of range he's looking for, and at the same time score with the shot that can at the very least trouble Smith as he's trying to come forward. He can also switch things up by trying to use a power jab to time Liam Smith coming in. This will, of course, push Smith back and allow Eubank to try and step forward a bit more when he wants to be more aggressive, which I think at times in this fight he's going to want to do. Ultimately, this should be used to help set up your power shots. You can also use this to go downstairs to try to lower that high guard of Smith because Smith does, in fact, have that high guard. You can lower it there. Then this will allow for you, of course, to land those bigger shots, hurt him while you're trying to land to the head, and then press forward with your actions as you're getting more deep into the contest. I would also say stay off straight lines. When you're coming forward, don't just rush in with your chin up. You can be a bit too tall at times and not tuck that chin enough. While Smith isn't the biggest puncher and is moving up in weight, you just don't want to give him those free tee-off kind of shots like that. There isn't a reason to do so. And when you're boxing and moving, you want to keep away from backing up too straight. You're pretty good at usually stepping off to the side. You just want to make sure you're doing that consistently and as often as you are backing away. This way, you're giving Smith very little to follow up on when he tries to come in and do some damage himself. Use those angles and that reach advantage that you possess because you do have two or three inches on him in that way. You're going to want to make sure that he's going to overextend trying to reach you and you can then make him pay with those counter shots as you're backing away and staying out of harm's way in the process. And finally, I would say don't look for the perfect shot. Basically, this means don't load up, but it also means more, and so you have to keep that in mind. What it means is you can't hope to just catch a veteran fighter with that singular shot that ends matters right then and there. You can't be that selective. He's going to be at least a bit more crafty on paper, give him the benefit of that doubt, and throw a bit more than you're usually going to throw. Let your hands flow. The shot should be coming a little more naturally. Counter well. You're going to have more power if you let that happen anyway by not loading up. Throw combinations as the fight progresses and use more volume as he wears down to really make him pay for anything he's trying to do to you. Now switching over to Smith here. For Smith to win, I think you want to jab your way inside. You don't have the reach here, so you're going to have to get inside and make your shots have a better chance of landing. You can't just rush in, you'll get caught. You also can't just walk in clumsily. You have to keep him busy. A double jab will do that. A jab in general, but especially a double jab, because triple it if you have to. This just keeps him busier. It allows for the shorter fighter to kind of use volume to overwhelm him, open up some opportunities, and keep a fighter who's backing away, perhaps, busier than they want to be. This creates openings because it's harder to throw more shots as you're backing away. And in general, this will force Eubank, a fighter who can be more selective with his shots, to be a bit busier, perhaps exchange a bit more while backing up, which I think gives Smith a little bit more of an advantage there. And this is certainly something you're trying to open up. So double that jab up, triple it up if you have to, and just make sure that you're pushing him back as you do so. I would also say keep a tight guard. Well, you can't be too defensive, especially against the bigger fighter, because he'll just overwhelm you. You have to be selective. Eubank is bigger, likely punches harder, so you have to have a high guard. But again, you're doing so to pick off his shots, and then once he's trying to move and reset, you're jabbing your way inside, getting some more action going once you're in the range you're looking for. 
Volume does not mean the guard has to drop and you just stand there looking to exchange. It means you have to make sure those hands return home when they're done being thrown. Once that happens and you get into that rhythm and pattern, you can pick his shots off, land with more of your work, get more things going as you press the fight forward, and overwhelm you bake down the stretch if you can keep that consistency going throughout the 12 rounds. And I would finally say land the short left hook. It can work well to the body. This will score, it'll slow him down, sap some of his power, but it also will sort of lower the guard or the attention a bit more of Eubank because he has a pretty low guard to begin with. But this is also a short shot that once on the inside, you can catch Eubank with by throwing it upstairs, especially if you have tagged him to the body with it a few times. If he doesn't pull back correctly, which again, he will make that mistake sometimes, him being Eubank, Smith can definitely catch him with that left hand, especially that left hook, and potentially do some damage. It's also a shot that can work if Eubank tries to be more aggressive himself and come forward. Use it to time him coming in, almost the way someone might do with a an uppercut, for example. I just think you have a good left hook, so keep it as a hook. And this can perhaps make him change course, back up a bit more, which I think gives Smith his best chance for success on the night. Now, in terms of my pick here, while it could be close early on, my prediction here is the favorite in Chris Eubank Jr. Perhaps if they were a bit closer in natural size and age and what have you, my pick would be different. Smith is a bit more seasoned, a bit more polished as a pro. However, Jr. is a solid middleweight who's even campaigned at super middleweight fairly comfortably, who has a bit of underrated power, and I think he uses that to win this fight. Smith will be aggressive, look to press Eubank back, and Chris will look to be patient, back away in circle, looking to set up more of his work as he typically does. As Eubank gets more warmed up, he will begin to start landing bigger shots over the top as Smith comes in, and then begin pressing him back much more in those kind of middle rounds. The weight of the shots will trouble Smith, who's been a career junior middleweight for the most part, especially that sweeping left hand that sets up the power right hand down the middle. This will help kind of get rid of the guard, and then as he's exposed, land a bit more. In those middle frames, it'll be tougher for Smith as Eubank goes through the gears, landing consistently. Later in the fight, Eubank will stun Smith and finish him off against the ropes as a towel is thrown in or as the referee steps in to halt the action. Winner, Chris Eubank Jr. via late fight stoppage. Now, in terms of the betting odds here, you have Eubank as a pretty sizable favor coming in at a minus 260 with Smith coming in at a plus 190. Not a great deal of value in the Eubank pick because I do think he is the favorite, but again, this isn't a completely unwinnable fight for Smith. Smith, on the other hand, you're getting two to one odds. If you happen to despise Eubank, which a lot of people do, or if you just think Smith wins this fight in some kind of close competition or has more power than perhaps some people are giving him credit for, it's not terrible odds there. Again, a small bet that you're willing to lose seems to make sense there. In terms of the over-under, it's basically predicted to go as a decision here, but the over-under that I found that seems the most plausible anyway is a 10.5, with over being a minus 315 and under being a plus 210. Personally, this to me is where the value is. If you happen to believe, like I do, that Eubank stops Smith, a plus 210 is wonderful for you. You could even get a bit deeper into the weeds and pick some kind of late round selection specifically for Eubank and find some really tantalizing odds. He is expected to be the winner and the fight is predicted to go the distance. But again, if you believe what I believe here that he stops Smith, you can really find some decent odds. But two to one is not that bad to begin with. So in any event, those are your odds. And for the new year here, my prediction record is 1-0 with one exact. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts, predictions, bets, so on and so forth. And do you think this fight actually goes the distance? Again, odds makers are saying that it does. But I'd really be curious what you guys think down in the comments section below. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at jcalderon underscore job. You can email me at jayonboxing at gmail.com. would love to hear from you there. Also, be sure to check out jayonboxing.com for the schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, news, all that good stuff. Just recently updated the schedule and it's filling out really really well for 2023 already a better year than last year in my opinion so go ahead and check that out there and as always until next time